Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. My name is Jess. I upload videos once a week, usually bookish content with a little bit of lifestyle and travel thrown in for good measure and today's video is going to be a very requested video and that is a list of cozy book recommendations and honestly since I started thinking about this video and trying to plan out the books that I wanted to include, the list of books that I could have mentioned has just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Every time I walk past my bookshelves, I'm like, oh, I could add that book, oh, I could add that book. Um, but uh, in order to keep this video as short as possible, I have managed to whittle it down to just five books. And I've tried to pick a range of genres um, and a range of different styles. So hopefully there will be at least one or two that might appeal to you. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's jump in and start talking about the books. The first book I'm going to mention is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. And the keen-eyed among you will know that this featured in my winter TBR just recently and the reason that it did is because I absolutely adored this book like obsessively adored it I loved it and I don't know why it has taken me so long to read the next book in this series so this is a trilogy called the Winter Night Trilogy and I'm embarrassed actually to say that I love this book so much and then I just haven't picked up the sequel so the sequel has gone on to my winter TBR it's going to happen um so this is basically it's a YA historical fantasy fiction um, and it is basically like a fairy tale for young adults. Um, it is just so, so gorgeous. It's so quiet. It's so well written. It's so beautiful and enchanting and captivating. And I just cannot recommend it enough. So the basic premise is that we are following a young girl called Vazia who lives in a rather bleak village um, in the wilderness of northern Russia uh, and Vazia is able to see and interact with Russian house spirits um, and this is very much the worship of the old gods so people leave out tributes to these spirits um, and this conflicts with the new which is religion and the church that is kind of sweeping across Russia and so Vazia finds herself caught between this pull of old and new and these tales of old magic and sorcery um, and even just house spirits in general are as you would imagine very much frowned upon uh, by the church and so when a young missionary comes to live in the village where Vazia is and Vazia's stepmother sort of becomes enthralled by him things begin to happen um, but honestly this is full of magic it's full of whimsy um, as I said earlier I would class it as a quiet book in that it just kind of steadily goes on at its own pace but it is just there's something about the writing style that is just so absorbing and captivating and I was just totally totally here for it I read this book so incredibly slowly because I wanted to savour every word, every page, every description, every moment that took place uh, within this story. I just wanted so much more of it. Um, I was really disappointed when the book ended and that again is, is why I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that I haven't picked up the next one in the trilogy because I don't know why, because I loved it so much. Um, but yeah, I think that it is perfect for this time of year. It's perfect for just cozying on up and getting totally lost in the world that Catherine Arden creates. And I cannot recommend it enough. I think that it's brilliant. The next book that I'm going to mention, I know is a real solid favourite for so, so many people. Um, and I just wanted to put it on the list because I felt like if you're sitting on the fence about reading it, Again, I cannot recommend it enough. And that is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Again, this is a book that I would say falls into the quiet book category and that you just have to stick with it and go on the journey that the author is creating. And by the time you get to the end, trust me, you will be in love and you will just think, wow, what an amazing book. What an incredible, incredible book. Um, so this is, I guess it's historical fiction. It's set... Um, in the late 1960s and then we follow a timeline a little bit earlier than that um, in North Carolina and basically in this town um, the town's heartthrob sweetheart much beloved son is found uh, apparently murdered and so we're following two different timelines we're following a more present-day timeline where the detectives are trying to find out 
what has happened and then we're following a past timeline and we're following someone who is known as the Marsh Girl and this is a young girl called Kaya whose family have very much lived on the outskirts of this town and they have been ostracised and looked down upon by the people of the town and as you go through the story it becomes apparent that somehow um, Kaya's story crosses with um, this young man's who is called Chase Andrews. Um, so their stories kind of cross and intertwine um, and you begin to uncover what really is going on. And honestly, I cannot say enough about this book. I cannot praise it enough. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, I got to the last page, I closed it and I just sat back and thought, whoa wow okay um if you want to be sold even more i do have a whole dedicated reading vlog to me reading this book i will link it up here and in the description box down below um but yeah just even down to the way that delia owens um describes the setting and the surroundings it just is so entrancing and enthralling and beautifully done um and it, I cannot, I don't, I don't know, I don't really have the words um, to adequately capture how good this book is. Um, and again, it's the kind of book where I feel like, um, and certainly for me as well, the first 20 to 30 percent I was really unsure and I was like, mm, I don't know actually if this book is going to be for me or not. Um, and I'm sure it's only because I'm the kind of person who can't DNF books, I stuck with it. And I'm so, so glad I did. It definitely is a book that redeems itself the more you get into it think it is beautifully written so well executed <sighs> don't sit on the fence about reading it just read it um and even if you walk away and think i don't know what all the fuss was about at least you'll have read it right um but yeah i thought that it was great like another one that i cannot recommend enough then I wanted to include um, a middle grade book and again I had a whole load that I could have chosen but in the end I went for a book that I feel like is not talked about so much in the book community and that is The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Um, this is the perfect book if you want to curl up and read a book in a day. I mean it is so short um, but it is just such a wonderful story. So we're following our protagonist Isabella, a young girl who dreams of being able to leave the island where she lives um, but due to political circumstances she's not allowed to do that. But her father was a cartographer and so he has memories and stories of all these wide far-flung places and she just dreams of being able to go to them and then one day her best friend disappears and as a result she is able to go off on an adventure beyond her her wildest imagining. She leaves behind the world that she knows and uncovers all kinds of myths and legends and dangers and just so so much more. This is a story of sadness and hope, of love and courage, of kindness and ultimately of magic and monsters all wrapped up in beautiful storytelling. Absolutely gorgeous, highly recommend it. Then I'm going to recommend The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. This is just a very quick, quirky, heartwarming, light and easy to read book. We initially meet Anthony, an author of short stories who has spent his whole life picking up and collecting and collating lost objects in an attempt to um, make amends for a promise that he broke once a long time ago and Anthony sadly passes away and he leaves his house and its contents to his assistant Laura and he charges her with one small task which is to reunite all of these lost objects with their original owners. Um, as I say, this is quirky, it's heartwarming, it's easy to read. Um, it is perhaps in places a little bit twee, um, but if what you want is just something that will give you the warm and fuzzies, then this book will tick that box for you. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, Laura goes on a little bit of a journey of self-discovery. I can't remember if she's newly divorced or just newly separated from some from a partner, uh, but she's kind of coming from a place of brokenness herself uh, and perhaps feeling a little bit lost herself. Um, and so we're following her journey as well. It's just a really lovely story, um, beautifully written, wonderful, charming, all those kind of adjectives all can be thrown at this book and they would stick. Um, yeah, one that I would definitely recommend for this list. And then for the last book, I've gone a little bit sideways in that it's probably classed as more atmospheric than cosy, but 
I feel like if you had a roaring fire in the background, a blanket, a hot drink and an hour or two to just fall into this book, it would just be exquisite. Um, and that is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. So Thirteenth Tale is historical fiction and we have a dual timeline, we have the historical fiction element and then we have a more present day timeline and it focuses around a place called Angel Field House, that's right, Angel Field House, which was the home of the March family. Um, so we have fascinating, manipulative Isabel, Charlie, her brutal and dangerous brother, and the wild, untamed twins, Emmeline and Adeline. Uh, but there is some kind of dark secret um, that surrounds Angelfield House. And then we have our present day timeline where we have our protagonist, Margaret, who is investigating the history and the past of Angelfield House. And she is about to uncover the secrets and what is really going on or what really went on. Um, again, this is a book, for me, I think Quiet and Cozy seem to go hand in hand. Just a book that you can get lost in for a couple of hours um, and this definitely ticks the mark because it is, it's a little bit unsettling, it's quite dark, um, it's very atmospheric, again it's very beautifully written and very well executed. It was my first Diane Setterfield book and I thought that it was so, uh, Diane Setterfield even, and I thought that it was so so good. Uh, and I could even have put Once Upon a River on this list, which is another book by Diane Setterfield that I loved. Um, atmospheric, cosy, I guess so. It depends, I suppose, whether your um, definition of cosy is like cosy romance. But they're not books that I tend to read. But cosy in terms of get yourself a blanket, get yourself a hot drink, get your fire going or put it on Netflix if you don't have an actual fire um, and just fall in to this world that Diane Setterfield and this story that she has created. You will not regret it, honestly. So, so good. So good. There you go. They are just a small number of cosy reads that I would recommend for this winter season. Um, as I said just before, I don't know whether it's your definition of cosy romance or cosy as in atmospheric and kind of just very relevant for the winter period. I don't tend to read romance books. So there wouldn't be many that would fit on this list although uh, the keeper of lost things does have a slight romance element to it um as well um but yeah i hope that you enjoyed this book let me know if you've read any of the ones that i've recommended and what you thought let me know in the comments below for people because this is a video that i get requested a lot if you've got any cozy book recommendations um and then we can get a bit of a, a dialogue going and other people can have a look and maybe get some recommendations for themselves as well as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give me the thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you aren't already i hope that you are all staying well and safe take care and i will see you